to, uh, will deal with tamponade and pericardiocentesis. At the end of the uh, lecture, you'll have an understanding of the echocardiographic appearance of pericardial collections, the physiology of cardiac tamponade, the basic echocardiographic signs of tamponade, and the role of echo in pericardiocentesis. Fluid can collect in the pericardium and will appear as a black space around the heart and within the pericardial sac unless it's composed of more fibrous uh, tissue, uh, fibrin strands or of clot in which case there's a variety of grey shades that may be represented by the collection. However, the presence of a pericardial collection does not equate to tamponade. Here is a parasternal long axis view of a patient with a large pericardial uh, effusion. It's seen as this black space surrounding the heart within the pericardium. It's tracking anterior to the descending aorta as opposed to this pleural effusion which is sort of in a more posterior plane. Um, and the fluid can be seen entirely surrounding the heart except where the heart is tethered uh, at its base. It's important to differentiate pericardial effusion from pleural effusion. So as mentioned, the pericardial effusion will track anterior to the descending aorta and pleural effusions appear more posterior and lateral. Not all pericardial effusions are black. So this is an example of a clot within the pericardium. This can occur either in traumatic uh, pericardial uh, tamponade or post-cardiotomy. Um, so even though it's a smaller volume uh, within the pericardium, it can still cause tamponade physiology. Even as little as sort of 50 mils of clot uh, can cause tamponade. A variety of um, etiologies uh, of pericardial effusions. Moving on to tamponade, we are classically taught to look for Beck's triad um, for, as a sign of tamponade. Now this triad is very specific, uh, but not very sensitive. Uh, for example, hypotension and shock is only present in 70% of uh, pericardial tamponade cases. Jugular venous distension in approximately 40%. And certainly in the hypovolemic uh, patient who has a pericardial tamponade, jugular venous distension won't appear until their circulating volume is restored. And the muffled heart sounds, while very specific, only occur in approximately 20% of cases. There are sonographic signs of tamponade that can be looked for. Firstly, one must have a pericardial collection. You can't have tamponade without pericardial fluid. The fluid, or clot as the case may be, will cause pressure effects um, on the right side of the heart, the lower pressure side, such that you will see right atrial collapse during its lowest pressure cycle, which is during ventricular systole, so right atrial systolic collapse. As a later sign, you will see right ventricular diastolic collapse, so once again, the right ventricle is in its lower pressure state uh, during ventricular diastole as it's slowly filling and uh, the pericardial effusion will impair right ventricular filling. Finally, there will be back pressure due to the impaired filling of the right side of the heart resulting in dilated IVC. It's also possible to look for sonographic equivalents of pulsus paradoxus, so in other words, the increased respiratory variation of uh, pulse pressure or mitral velocities, tricuspid velocities, left ventricular outflow tract velocities. But this is beyond the scope of this course as it requires uh, a great deal of uh, accuracy and understanding of uh, Doppler techniques. Here is an example of a patient with tamponade. Note that the 
This is a subcostal four-chamber view. This is all pericardial effusion. That's left ventricle here, left at atrium. It's almost impossible to see the right-sided structures. This, in fact, is the uh, invaginated right atrial wall, and here is the right ventricular wall. The striking abnormality in this example, uh, an apical four-chamber view, is the dynamic invagination of the right atrial, right atrial wall. Now, an alternative diagnostic approach in the peri-arrest situation is to think of a different triad, the presence of a peri-arrest patient, so hypotensive or shocked, who has the presence of a pericardial effusion on echo and no better explanation for the hypotension can be thought of as having tamponade. The treatment depends on the cause. So in the presence of clot or post-pericardiotomy, um, the, the appropriate uh, treatment is to evacuate the clot. This can't be done through a needle or safely through a pericardial window, so the appropriate course of action is thoracotomy and uh, a formal evacuation of the clot from the pericardium. In the presence of a more fluid uh, collection, certainly pericardiocentesis or a pericardial window are possibilities. The traditional approach to pericardiocentesis is shown here, a blind subsiphoid approach with the needle directed towards the patient's left shoulder. Uh, this procedure has uh, a high uh, mortality and morbidity rate. Uh, the quoted mortality is in the order of uh, 10%. Uh, the morbidity, uh, approximately 50%. And uh, all sorts of injuries have been described, including uh, ventricular punctures, dissection of coronary arteries, uh, liver biopsies, uh, transgastric puncture, um, and certainly there's a high risk of needle stick to the operator. A safer approach is shown here. So this is an apical four-chamber image um, with a needle coming in once again from subxiphoid approach, but now the echo is used to confirm placement of that needle within pericardium. So a bubble test is before being performed. This is simply the injection of a small amount, uh, two mils even, of agitated saline, uh, so saline with suspended micro bubbles um, into the pericardial space, and this lights up as a bright speckle refractor of, um, of ultrasound and uh, is clearly seen in the pericardial space, indicating that it's now safe to aspirate from that uh, position. Here uh, is the progressive documentation of improvement. So here the right ventricle is almost squashed uh, tightly shut, patient sitting upright. Once 180 mils of effusion have been drained, the right ventricle is starting to appear as a small slit-like structure. And finally, when 600 mils of fluid have been removed, the right ventricle is certainly looking much more normal. So in summary, we've covered the echo appearance of pericardial effusions, the physiology of cardiac tamponade, the basic echocardiographic signs of tamponade, and the role of echo in uh, assisting pericardiocentesis and documenting success.